<laughs> yeah. So from what I see, it wasn't the fact that she was Congolese or not South African that was the main issue. It was the issue of education. Mm. Okay. Because as she said, she couldn't go to university just after studying because yeah. of circumstances. And my, my parents, who are teachers, both of them, were very strong on education and getting mm. a gotcha. qualification. Mm. And by that time we met, I'd already completed two degrees. Yeah. So yeah. It, <laughs> I think that was... The thing they thought I was name. after his money that he yeah. didn't have oh, at the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, another week, another beautiful episode uh, of Love, Marriage and Family Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Mo and I am with Pindi. And uh, if, you, if it's your first time joining us on this episode, please, if you don't mind, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, so that you can be abreast about, you know, whatever it is that we want to put out there content-wise. And uh, also it helps us to know that you're out there. And thanks for the comments and the likes, you know, as well. Um, and uh, as I said, I'm not alone. I'm with this beautiful <laughs> queen. Oh, man. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Um, every week it's an exciting time for us because we get to sit with amazing people and this week is no exception. We are sitting with an amazing, amazing couple. Really one of the people that we really, really like, you know. And we hope you're going to enjoy this episode with us. Um, today we are sitting with the Zagza family, um, Sandra and Ayanda Zagza. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome, Thank you um, guys. It's, it's so good to have you. Um, I think this is one of the episodes that we've been meaning to have um, oh, wow. for, for, quite quite, for quite a while yeah. and I'm excited that Sandra is feeling better oh thank god yeah. because <laughs> the last time we spoke my goodness your voice couldn't come out <laughs> no, I was so, not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so exciting to be sitting with you again um, just to give a brief on our amazing couple um, this week so um, they are parents um, to three amazing amazing children um, and um the, Sandra is a mother. Um, she is a um, mindset strategist. Yes. Oh my gosh, you need to unpack what <laughs> yeah, that is. What that means. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's a keynote speaker and she's also um, was Mrs. South Africa top 10 mm. finalist. Mm. And I think that's where I met you. That's where we and met. And I was like, one day, that day is going to come. I'm going to sit with this amazing lady mm -hmm. because mm. I really, really enjoyed uh, meeting you. Yeah. Um, and I thought, my goodness, what a beautiful aura that this woman has. But Ayanda will tell us more about that. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome, guys, to the show. We're excited so um, to be Thanks sitting with us. you today. Oh, yes. Yeah. Welcome, guys. So you guys, uh, you, you guys have been married for how long now? 17 years. S 17 years. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Last month. Yeah, <laughs> 17 Ooh, years that's, last that's, month. That's oh, a lot. Happy yeah. anniversary. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, where did you guys meet? How? Tell us, you know, uh, just give us that romantic story. Uh, it's always different, it's, it's by the way. Yeah? It's romantic, though. It's always different, you know, uh, each couple, well, not couples, but, I mean, each partner yeah. will have their own version, yes. you know, often. But anyway, mm. tell us, how did you guys meet? You go. Yeah, so... My version is a shorter, <laughs> less oh, colorful version. Oh, she has a longer version. one. There's a longer, fuller version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, so I start the story the first day that I met her, yeah. which was uh, we were invited to, actually I was standing in for a friend for a play that they were doing at a church. Okay, in Joburg, yeah. it so happens. And so as I arrived there with my friend, she arrives with other friends of ours at the same spot. Oh, wow. I see this woman and pay her a compliment, which she didn't take as one, and got a very fiery response. Yeah. <laughs> Fire. That was our very first <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Fast forward a couple of years, we became friends, uh, and that led to love. Wow. Yeah. Ten months later, we're married. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a short version. So that, that, <laughs> that, that um, fire that obviously she had, I, after ten months, it actually just wow. waved off. No, Somehow. no. <laughs> you get to you taste the different versions of the fire. Okay. <laughs> so I, it's still I say to people that, you know, as you said, I'm, or you don't say, but I'm, I'm from a Zulu background. Okay. Yeah. And we have this tembu, 
This is my is Tim, but all my wives are here. <laughs> you know? I love it. So she's enough. She's you know enough. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I enough. love that. Yeah. So when you say you have this Tim, you mean in terms of the culture of KZN? The culture or you mean component. your family? No, no, no. Oh, okay. My family doesn't come from polygamous marriages. Got you. Okay. But I'm no, saying culturally, yeah. Got you, got you. But then she, he's saying that Sandra, I mean... She, yeah. She's enough. She's yeah. wife number one, two, three, yeah, four. All of them. Yes. <laughs> and Sandra, you're, you're, you're obviously, you have the same version of how you guys met. No, not really. I, <laughs> I, I had arrived, I just landed actually that day. I moved from Durban yeah. to Pretoria. Yeah. It was time for me to move to Pretoria. I felt the Lord call me. And before I left Durban, some friend of mine came up and gave me a prophetic word and said, God said that you're going to meet your husband in Pretoria. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. And, you know, <laughs> those prophetic words, you're like, you're just my friend, you like me, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. And funny enough, I learned that morning. I was a bit traumatized because I just packed up my entire life and, you know, moving to Pretoria. Relocate, yes. And my friend picked me up from the airport. She yeah. says, we're going to this thing at church. And funny enough, the day I arrived in Pretoria is the day I met my husband without knowing. Oh, like yeah. the wow. same day oh my word and then apparently he said to me oh she's nice does she have a sister i'm like what kind of compliment is that <laughs> i'm like and then my compliment was my answer was of course i have a sister and i moved on like if you want to say i'm okay. pretty just say i'm pretty i, had, uh, I think you, need to, you, you needed to try another one <laughs> So Crunch if you're it. saying that she has a sister, actually, I'm not the, you're not the one I'm looking Precisely. for. Precisely. <laughs> like, what kind of compliment is that? So, so that's, that was our start. Oh, meet. wow. Yeah. yeah. So in Durban, were you with family in Durban? Yes. So okay. when my family and I arrived in South Africa, we all lived in Durban. Okay. And my life has just come to a standstill. There yeah. was nothing happening anymore. And I needed, I needed to change. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Pretoria was... The place I felt the Lord. That's interesting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was interesting. But actually, I had two choices. I was given an opportunity to move to the U.S. to okay. go study or Pretoria. But in my heart of heart, oh, wow. the U.S. was much more exciting, glamorous. And yeah. All that. yeah. But I really knew that I had to come to Pretoria, much, much to my parents' disappointment. Mm. Yeah. Like Pretoria, the like, U.S. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you know? I just, I, I was following yeah the voice of god yeah and, and i was young i didn't even know if i was making the right choice but it just felt like this is what i needed wow. yeah to do and it was the right thing mm. and and f f so when you decided to come to south africa so where is your home country so um, i'm originally from the drc congo okay. um we my parents and i arrived in south africa as refugees we okay. we lived in a refugee camp in malawi um, skipped a few borders illegally to try and find shelter because yeah. of, at the time, the civil war was happening in the DRC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, we arrived in South Africa in December 1995. Five, yeah. Okay. And um, I was young. I was six, 15 turning 16 yeah. the following year. Very yeah. traumatic story, very traumatizing. Yeah. Uh, didn't speak a word of English when we arrived here. So literally Apparently. started from... Scratch mm. wow. from scratch. How did that go? Hard. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. you taught yourself English, I which did. is quite interesting. Yeah. I did because when I was put in school, and I knew I had options. What, what is going to make my life easy? Yeah. Mm. What am I going to do to succeed? Yeah. And I looked at the options that were around me. What are the resources that I have? I could have spoken Zulu, but in my mind, I'm like, Zulu is not going to take me yeah. to university. Yeah. Limiting, yeah. Yeah. It will be limiting. Yeah. So I picked one language. And because we were so poor, 99% of the time I went to school without food or money or whatever. My parents literally had enough money only for a bus ticket. So I would arrive at school. First break was always the shortest, I think, if I remember. Yeah, it's always yeah. the shortest. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then check, second break, I would literally take myself to the library and I would sit down and I would take books. I started with the easy read. Remember at the time there was English first language? Yeah. yeah. So I started with the easy read that was for the English second language, uh, like Roald Dahl and... I would start with that reading, yeah. and then I watched um, The Bold and the Beautiful. Oh, <laughs> yes. Of course. That's where we all learned English, by the way. And even generations. Even and generations. And I was always upset. I didn't know what Ridge saw in Brooke. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm here. Yeah. What are you yeah. okay? Yeah. But that's how I learned how to speak English. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, you meet this one 
crazy um, day in Johannesburg, you said, mm. at a church event. Yeah. Mm. What is it that got your attention where, where she's concerned? I can't explain it. Yeah. Yeah. I get into trouble for the story because as if you sit long enough to the story, she will mention that I had a girlfriend at the time. <laughs> And I, it, it well, did you have though. a girlfriend? I did. <laughs> okay. So why are you saying no. <laughs> like she's lying? No, no, no. I'm not saying she's lying, <laughs> but I'm just saying in terms of what came, Get it's you. an yeah. important point because even doing things like that or complimenting women is not something I do. No, it's okay. not. Yeah. So for me to actually voice out what I was thinking to her in retrospect <laughs> yeah. Yeah. was, I think, indicative of the relationship that you're going to have. Because yeah. that was uncharacteristic, which is why maybe it was such a bad pickup line or whatever you call yeah. it. I'm not sure. Whatever came that to mind, you yeah. went for it. Yeah, yeah so I, I can't say, of course, I think she's striking physically, yeah. but the person that I got to know later is really what I fell in love with, not so much the outside. Got you. I think there are a lot of beautiful people on the outside, yeah. Yeah. and then you see the inside. Yeah. Not so pretty after all. Yeah. So it was the person I got to know in time um, wow. that is the person that I fell in love with. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. You are sorted for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> for every night, so, man. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, obviously, this is 2005 when you first came, right? Yes. Yeah. So th you guys are... I'm doing my maths. No, here. no, no. So when you first came, it was 1995. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 1995. Sorry, yes. sorry. Yeah. I arrived in, 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 in Durban in 1995. Yeah. Yeah. And then moved to Pretoria 2005. Yes, yes. that's yes. the number. Yes, 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 yes. that's the one. The because you had moved. already 10 years. Yes. Mm. So the English you had learned within that period, right? Yeah. Okay, so mm. by the time you guys meet, you are fluent. Yes, mm. with my very weird nuances. <laughs> <laughs> I use the wrong words sometimes. <laughs> my children are like, that's not what, how you say that. I'm like, yeah. but you understood me, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you got the point. <laughs> yes. So where I'm getting with this mm. is that now you guys meet and you pick this girl and you pick her accent mm. and what happens? What What is it that goes on in your mind? Because she, <laughs> clearly she's not Zulu. Uh, so <laughs> we had not met um on this particular occasion, but the first time that I saw her was actually at a prayer meeting. And yeah. she got to pray in the prayer meeting, not yeah. knowing who she was, because she was visiting from Durban. Yeah. And one of the things that I remember was this person who kept saying, Father, Father. Like, yeah. What is Father? Like, yeah. it's Father. Yes, Father. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that, that, that now, I think, comes into play as well with things of communication, because we are both not first language speakers. Correct. Mm -hmm. English, first language English speakers. Yeah. I'm Zulu, um, French, etc. Um, but yeah, it's just, as I say, it's a character that I think one chooses and falls in love with in, in time. Yeah. What she does, what she, how she spoke, whatever did it was, was not relevant. Um, yeah. And I think isn't relevant. We, we share the same, I think, foundations of yeah. core mm. beliefs and mm. values mm. as important. I got to know. And yeah, that's how I think we chose each other. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, to marry. Wow. So, um, Sandra, you obviously, at some point later on, you realize that, okay, he's not a bad guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After <know>. all. <laughs> After, After all. all. <laughs> Forget the pickup line, but he's not a bad guy. Forget the girl in his life. <laughs> you know? <laughs> how, how did you guys transition from, from that to where we are now? Um, so, he, we became friends somehow. No, he a came very to me. Controversial story a itself. very controversial story. I'm not going to get into it in case she watches it. And then no, she, no, no, go she, through it. Please go over it. And um, so he, we became really good friends. Okay. And when he came to me and says, I really want to be your friend. Mm. And I said to after him, broken up. after he and his girlfriend had broken okay. up oh, and they had okay. moved on, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a... I'm not Are a, you not the reason? No, yeah. I'm not the reason okay. at all. <laughs> For, but I, I was never the reason. I was not there when they broke up. I yeah. just happened to be the aftermath yes. of the, you know. And um, he came to me and he said, I want us to be friends. I said, that's fine. Just don't fall in love with me. Oh, okay. Because I was having fun. I was dating. Yeah. I, was, mm. I was not looking for a relationship. Oh, okay. I was just, I really, I was very content as a single girl. Yeah. And I said to him, do not fall in love with me. Oh, whatever okay. you do. And yeah. obviously. And then he and said, yeah, okay. Who, falls, who fell in love with who first? You. 
<laughs> Rumor has it. Okay. <laughs> Rumor I, I, has I, I, under, I wanna hear this. Who fell in love first? She'd broken up with me by the time I even knew we were dating. <laughs> oh my, okay. <laughs> I did not break up with you. <laughs> what was the reason though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we were just friends as far as I was concerned. Yeah. But maybe clearly there was more going yeah. on than what I knew. Yeah. But break up with a friend. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I well, like, people do like break up with friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Too. But <laughs> but is there is I mean there's a there's a point where you know there are romantic feelings. Mm. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean. And where is that point? So we had gone. Our church used to have these conferences once a year. Yeah. And we had gone. It used to be in Bloemfontein. Mm. Yeah. And we hadn't driven together, had we? No, I we didn't so. drive together. But we've. The other thing, because we came from a predominantly white church, right? Yeah. And we were only like four of black people at the time. Oh, so you yeah, but stick also together. no, we didn't. We were friends in secret because we didn't <laughs> want people to put pressure on us to yeah. say that we are dating. Oh, so yes. nobody knew that we're actually hanging out. Yes. Not a single soul. Even my best friend yeah. did not know that we were <laughs> hanging out. So when we arrived in Bloemfontein. People could see that we were close, but we were trying to stay separate. Yeah. So friends of mine from Durban asked him, are you and Sandra dating? He comes to me and says, Sandra, these people said they think we are dating. I'm like, okay, why are you upset at With me? me? <laughs> <laughs> it's a vibe you're giving. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you upset at me? <laughs> what did I do? What did yeah. I do? So we spent that whole week together. It was beautiful. And yeah. we drove back to, uh, to Pretoria. Something had shifted that mm. week. And at the time, we must say, I was the working girl, and he was still a student, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He was a broke student, and I was the working <laughs> yeah. girl. Yeah. 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 And because he's two years younger than me, so there was also that um, dynamic. Dynamic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when, when I, I, how things change when you think they change, I needed to go get a new cell phone. Okay. And I asked him to come with me. He had a car, I didn't have a car. So we thought, okay, we'll meet oh, halfway. A broke student with a car. Broke student with a oh, car. Okay. I know, you know. Oh. That kind of broke. Oh. That's kind of broke. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of broke. Oh so my. he picked me up. We went to uh, Brooklyn Mall. But that day happened to be one of the hottest days. Yeah. And I was wearing beautiful skirt. I was dressed nicely. I said to him, I'm so hot. Let's go to Mr. Price to buy a pair of shorts. Mm. So we, he, he helped me pick a pair of shorts and I tried on. I'm like, this one, that one. He's like, no, that one. I'm like, perfect. Okay. We, it was a well, nice pair of shorts. It was a nice <laughs> pair of shorts. <laughs> and then he says, well, what are you doing? You want to come, you know, have lunch with me? He used to work at the high performance center. I had received a voucher for my birthday. Why don't you come have lunch mm. with me? And we lunch, it was breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything, everything. Oh my. We spent the entire day together and then, yeah. And oh. it was like, okay, now, yeah. now I this is not just a friend. Yeah. No, for me as well, I think that day it was, um, it was actually a little bit after that, but it, it was that, that particular lunch that you referred to, which was for my birthday, and I got to hear some of her story of where she came from and yeah. Yeah. some of the details, because I'd heard bits and pieces. But that day was a day that I thought to myself, this, this person is amazing, yeah, and I need to do something about it. Mm. Yeah. There was also a guy in the... In the, the fridge. No, it's like, oh, yes, it's not yes. just you. <laughs> no, no, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to move fast. He had to strike when it was so hot. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there, Ayanda. Hey, yeah. you, you can't lose no, something no, no, no. when you already like, yes. you know, yeah, have it close. Yeah, no, cool. he had decided he's going to ask me out in a month's time. But yeah. there was a guy lurking as well that I was yeah. also like enjoying. Entertaining, yeah. Because I was a single girl. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Options yeah. open. Yeah, yeah. Like, why must I close the do when no, you have not no, made no, your no. intentions this clear. one was really enjoying herself <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. i think that's the mistake a lot of young girls do yeah. these days is you close your doors there's one guy you close every door in this one if yeah. he has not said to you i like you yeah. i am dating you you are Exclusive. free mm. bird you, you can mm. still you can you know mm. date yeah go on dates yes. yeah so i and you were like mm -mm. <laughs> no it, i'm closing this door now it was literally it was I, I went after that the next day on the sunday i went to go speak to a friend a pastor friend i said this is this is what's going on i want you to know in a month i'm probably going to ask out there was another meeting that we had that's next sunday i was like uh -uh. Today. <laughs> <laughs> month Today is too is long. <laughs> the month is too long. Um, and that's the day I asked her out. Yeah. Oh, she, she said yes. 
I, I just want to take uh, you back, back. Mm-hmm. just one step back um, because uh, you came to South Africa with the family, yes. right? And um, and there's a point where you are saying, you know, uh, you went without, yes. you know, quite a lot. And w- where where is the transition? How how did you transition from that? you know, to the time where you guys met. was where you guys met, I gather, because you were going out having fun. nice <laughs> fun. You know? so, so the status yeah. has changed. Mm. You know, h- how did you transition from there? Could I comment quickly before you answer? Mm-hmm. When you're saying we're going out, we are talking about going out with 50 rand. Okay. <laughs> we're talking 25 rand movies, yeah. Yeah. 10 rand for ice cream, yeah. and that's our date. Yeah. So Sandra mentioned that she was working. Yeah. I wasn't working or earning a decent salary at the time. And that I think is part of, if, just to interject that couples, I think, who are intent on getting married and staying together, don't use money as a reason not to. That's good. Yeah. You, can, you can spend time together. That's the important bit. But yeah. if there's an expectation that you're going to go find dining and the whole thing, yeah. maybe that timing is not quite. We yeah. can do that now, yeah. but we couldn't do that then. So. So in you, other words, you had to go with what you had. We had to yeah. yeah. just use what we had. Yeah. The point was to spend time together. As long as we went on a lot of walks. Yeah. yeah. We because obviously we are Christian. We we didn't um, believe in sex before marriage. Yeah. So we had to do things outside the house a lot. A lot. Yeah. yeah. To, to, to get yourselves to, busy. To get ourselves busy and get out, not put yourselves under temptation. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, not staying at my house very late or yeah. You know, Boundaries and because yeah. and he behaved. Behaved. Did he, <laughs> he really behaved? Because the, the first time, the first time we we kissed was at our wedding on our wedding day. Oh wow! Oh my god! Oh, so wow. he's a very disciplined man. Oh wow! He really behaved. Yeah, uh, that's so sweet. I think going back to Mo's question. Yes. Um. It's very important to understand a journey of someone who's a refugee in South Africa. Yes. yes. You know. Yeah. Um. I, I want you to take us through that. You know, you arrive in 1995. How does life look like? And obviously to where you are now. Life was not easy. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't easy. Often we um, we went hungry, as I said. Um, we slept outside. We we struggled. We, yeah. were, we were poor. So you come with your mom, dad, dad and, and siblings. siblings. Yes, yeah. I'm the oldest of five children. So when we arrived, the oldest was 15. The youngest was three. Sure. Yeah. Wow. So it, that for my mom and dad, that was a lot. I, I see myself wow. now as a parent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed with all the resources. Yeah. But imagine not having the resources. Yeah. So I started working in matric. Obviously, in school, we all worked. Yeah. Everybody worked. Um, I was while you at school. While I was at school, mm. what you're saying, wash. I became an expert dishwasher. My hands have never recovered really, <laughs> because at the time I couldn't even yeah. afford gloves. So you just wash hands. Yeah. You can start washing dishes at the restaurant from about seven, uh, five p.m. until three a.m. in the morning. Just sure. washing dishes so that you would get money for a, a bus ticket mm. to go, mm. and that will. You know, we'll cover like a bus ticket for a week and a T-shirt if I wanted to buy a T-shirt. Yeah. So I was always a hard worker. I was never afraid of work. And when I matriculated, because I I had missed three years of school with all the traveling in Mm. the refugee camp and everything, I matriculated at 20. And I finished school on a Friday, Saturday morning. I started my first job. Sure. At uh, Caucasian hair salon as a receptionist. Yeah. Knew nothing about the hair industry. Absolutely mm. nothing. Mm. And I remember my first salary was 2,500 rand. And after tax and deductions, I took home 2,200. Mm. That was a lot of money in my family. So in a sense, yeah. I became like the breadwinner as well. Because yeah. it was a lot you of money. You are still in high school. Yeah. yeah. I just finished just high finished school. Oh, you high just school. completed. Mm. Yeah. So I started working. Sure. And then from there, I went to work for lawyers as a receptionist, PA. So every time I got a job, I got a better, a income. better, better salary, income, yeah. better salary, better mm. income. I literally worked my way up in every company that I, mm. sure. I worked in. Mm. And then um, my last company in Durban was Nature's Choice Product. We buy their frozen yes. food. I was the receptionist. I used to answer 400 calls a day. Oh. 400 a day. It means by the time you get home, you don't want to talk? No. <laughs> and I had laryngitis infections all wow. the time. Wow. 
Um, and then that's when I just got tired of that. I moved to Pretoria, yeah. worked for a smaller company, didn't get paid well. Mm. But it was like something to get me here. Yeah. And then I went for a really nice company, ProMan. Uh, mm. It was a project with the government that they were going to yeah. uh, renovate the whole of the inner city. So I was oh, there, like wow. the project administrator, oh, wow. receptionist, uh, you know, doing running the office. I think that's when we met. Mm. Yeah. Mm. At, at that time. At that that's time. what you were doing. And also money-wise, my money was never my own because whatever I made, I had to send. To, to home. Yeah. Home. Home. So... I struggled a lot, but I had a lot of rich friends. So no. I went on nice holidays. They, um, I experienced a good life. Yeah. Uh, and also my dad always used to say that whatever you want to become, you have to surround yourself with people Ooh, like that. Yeah. So because I was poor, I didn't want to stay in poverty. I've mm. always been very <clears throat> clear about the life I wanted and how I wanted it. Sure. Uh, and what boy I will date and not date. If you didn't have a plan, a future, you are not... You can't come anywhere close. No, <laughs> because for me, I knew what hardship was, and I was not intentionally going to put myself <coughs> under hardship. <coughs> I was never going to do that. So that's how I worked my way up. And I end up, people saying, then how did you date a student who didn't have yeah. money? Mm, there and was potential there. But he, <laughs> I knew his work ethic, mm. the kind of man he was. He had a vision. I, I always say to him, give me a vision. If we're jumping in the sea, we will jump. Yeah. I just need to know where we're going. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think so you're the same. So, yeah. so, so that I can come with yeah. you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, what are we doing? Oh, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. I don't follow. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. if you say we are going to Timbuktu, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Let's go do it. Yeah. 100%. But That's give so me a good. plan. Don't. Oof. Yeah. yeah. I need a plan. And I think a lot of these yeah, generation, it's a, he's good looking. I'm like, well, he, he might get in a car accident and lose his looks. Yeah. Mm. So that, mm. that's that's not permanent. It's not permanent. Yeah. It's mm. like, what is the plan? I knew he had a plan. He wanted to start a business, a lot of things. And he wanted to also make money. He wanted to be rich. And I also yeah. didn't want to marry someone who didn't want more than what they had now. Yeah. Mm. So we, we, in that sense, we're always together. Even today, I drive him crazy because I... Um, I often don't know how to celebrate things because yeah. of my child upbringing. It's like the next thing. What's the next thing? The yeah. next thing. And it can be dangerous as well. Yeah, and it can put pressure um, on someone like Ayanda because um, obviously you're always wanting, yes. you don't get to a point where you're content. Yes. And I also think it's fear of going back mm -hmm. where you come from. You yeah. know, sometimes sometimes fear can do that to us. Yeah. Where Because you're fearful, you're like, ish. I always need to be when, with the next check because yeah. I don't know I get to a point where I'm yeah. poor um, again. So for you, um, Ayanda, I mean, I think you are very brave. <laughs> I must be honest. You know, to decide that I'm leaving a province, yeah. which is obviously um, not a familiar territory even on its own because no. it's not where you were, where you were born yeah. to come to a different country. I mean, to a different province. That's quite brave. You know, so for you, Ayanda, obviously realizing all the things that you have realized about her, um, you know, how she arrived in South Africa and all of that, didn't you, how did, how did that make you feel? Because sometimes you introduce someone and people are like, uh, where is she from? Um, <laughs> Eastern yeah. Cape, uh, you know, <laughs> Bloemfontein or whatever. Mm. So when you intro her to your family, what is their reaction? <laughs> <laughs> looks like looks like Sandra wants to respond. No, I was gonna say the the family response probably deserves a podcast in itself. In itself? <laughs> yeah. No way! No, it yeah. really does. Yeah, you're I kidding me. Suffice to say that for me, that was never that was never a thing in my mind. Yeah, it was the person that I'm marrying. Mm. The package that they come in wasn't a consideration in the sense that. I, I think I, I grew up very open-minded. Yeah. So whatever girls were available, that was a spectrum. It yeah. wasn't like I'm going to marry that kind or that yeah. kind. Yeah. I did grow up in an environment where we were very, um, let's say, critical of foreigners in ignorance. A lot, and a lot of rhetoric at the moment talks about foreigners, 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 yeah. without an understanding or an appreciation of the situation that drives people away from their own home countries, and I grew sure. up in an environment like that too, where we would speak in derogatory terms um, about foreigners. Yeah. Hearing that story then firsthand, 
and meeting now somebody in the flesh who's gone through that experience suddenly changed my views of the, th there's there are reasons behind these things. It's not that someone just decides, oh, today I'm going to go to South Africa, so mm. there I go, I'm going to jump a border, and et cetera, et cetera. Not that I'm promoting illegal things, but I'm saying that there's a lot more compassion that we can have for situations. So that was, I think, enlightening for me. The fact that she's from the Congo for me is a talking point. It's not a definitive thing in a sense. Mm -hmm. They could have been from Umtata or from yeah. wherever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it yeah. didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the person, the quality of the person is what I was looking for. That's so good. Yeah. Sometimes we get caught up in all these superficial Absolutely. differences yeah. and really and not uh, plug into our essence, yeah. you know, as human beings and, and, and as if... Um, me being white and you being black, you know, that's the reason yes. we should not be together yeah. or whichever, you know, and these are all superficial, yeah. right? But I think as soon as you start <coughs> dividing these things, it's almost yeah. like at which point do you stop? There's no, there's no end. You'll if you have, uh, yeah. There is absolutely it just, no it end. It doesn't help. There is yeah. absolutely yeah. no end. Yeah. However, in South Africa, as you're correctly saying, you know, this does become an issue yeah. and often it gets blown up, yeah. Yeah. you know, and um, it gets, you know, media attention. Right. And then it's, please take us through, especially you, you know, how, how, how that affects you every time you see um, these so-called xenophobic, mm. you know, attacks or um, all of these things that are happening and they are happening in the news and it's in your face and so on. How does that affect you, um, you know, as a person who uh, came, you know, to South Africa? I think that's always so hard because um, to my dismay, I suffer less racism mm. and more xenophobia. Oh, like, okay. I get you. Yeah. Uh, and because of that, I've often found myself in more white spaces mm. than black spaces. I feel safer. There. It's weird. Mm -hmm. considering yeah. the Understand. history of this country, yeah. right? I feel safer in white spaces because they, I'm just a human being. Acceptance. Mm. Acceptance. And with the black community, it's been very hard. And KwaZulu-Natal, guys, growing up in KwaZulu-Natal as a foreign kid is... Uh, <laughs> 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 you are joking. Yeah. Oof. As a child. Well, I once had, I got on a bus because, and also I was struggling to speak English, right? Yeah. And I got on the bus, the minor buses. You guys, yes. yeah. Got on the minor buses, and I asked the driver. I wanted to know where I was going, and I spoke to him in English. And the bus was full. Broken English. Broken at English at that time. <laughs> and um, and he spoke to me in Zulu. Assumption. And I said to him. And I spoke back to him in mm. French. He says, "What did you say?" I said, "Precisely." You don't understand me. Mm. I don't understand you. English is the language that, that we, we can, we both. can, we can mm. both understand. My family has been spat at. Things have happened. You know when people complain about apartheid? Mm. That's, I'm like, I'm, I'm always like, guys, the way you treat black people is the way white people have treated black people. So you actually can't complain because you do the exact same thing. Sure. You do the same thing. In reverse. In reverse. <laughs> That's what it is. It's like the oppressed becomes the oppressor. Black people will tell you it is tough being a black person in this country. Mm. It's tough. Mm. Particularly when you go to home affairs and whatever. Mm. I always tell my husband, we always laugh, you have to look like you're poor. Because if you arrive there looking nice, that lady is going to make your life hell. <laughs> it's like, yeah. she's... She's going to make sure there. you pay for it. Yeah. yeah. She's like, so you have to go looking a certain way. Wow. Like false humility oh. so that mm. you get treated just with the basic respect, you know. That and is sad, that guys. Is sad. It is very yeah. sad. And also the Zulus did not treat us well as a family. And I imagine me come to my mom and dad. Hey, guys, I'm getting married. Yeah, and he's Zulu. Zulu. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Sandra? <laughs> and he's Zulu. But thankfully, my mom and dad have always judge people by yeah by themselves and when when you see these xenophobic attacks for me it's always like this is so sad but i'm also grateful for the privilege because even if within the refugee community there is privilege absolutely and i'm privileged i live mm. a very privileged life mm. compared to a lot of foreigners in mm. this country my life is privileged mm. 
So I would say the higher status I got in the world, it's so weird to say that, mm. the less xenophobia I'm experiencing because I'm not, I'm more in the spaces where people have traveled. Mm. Yeah. They've been all over the world. Open mind. Open-minded. Open-minded. Yeah. Um, so it gets less and less. But sure. for the people that are in environment where people haven't been exposed to these yeah. things, it's very hard. Oh, wow. man. I think what you just said just broke my heart. You know? It's very hard. What you just said about that you will feel safer within the white community than yeah. black community that 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 hurts yeah it's it's much that it, hurts. even my siblings will tell you it's much easier that mm. hurts and um I'm, I'm not bringing this up um for any other reason mm -hmm. it's also one of the things i noticed um with you when we were um at the mrs sa yes you know you you will shy away from us yes <laughs> you know yeah and that in itself brings judgment because yeah. we, because so it's like one of those you can't win it oh, was in yeah. school even in school i arrived there the black girls will be so bullying so mean mm. so vicious and you're like oh my gosh and then you go hang out with the white girls that treat you yeah well and then the black girls hate on you for hanging because out because now you're choosing mm. i was like hey, guys God, I, what must i do now I'm, I'm like i've survived <laughs> borders i'm not gonna come die at the feet of apartheid i'm going to hide in the library like you sort yourselves out this is not yeah. my fight i've got yeah. my own fight to oh, fight man. so that's how i ended up being in the library yeah. all the time because i just couldn't handle this the pressure mm -hmm. and also the, the 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 African girls the bullying the laughing at you the yeah. eh, the belittling the oh, men mm -hmm. guys but you get over it you move on yeah. yeah and you you and then when you decide to marry you go Zulu <laughs> Why? That, why that suit you? No, no, no. For me, it's not, it's not even about that. Or I'm, even white. I'm just yeah. saying. Right. I, I, I'm just saying the 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 the, the yeah. interesting yeah, yeah. side of this whole thing yeah. is after everything that you've gone through, yeah. but when you when you decide to marry or fall in love. Zulu man. Back, Zulu. back to a Zulu man. Back to a root. You know and, what I mean? And, and by the way. As you said, which is a story on its own, you know, with you introducing her, you know, to your family. Just the overview. on top, just the overview, yeah. you know, how, how that, because this lady is not coming by herself. Yeah. Like you do marry, you're marrying a gumede. Yeah. You know, um, uh, this is Sandra who's coming from yeah. and who's been through, you mm. know. Or DRC. Yeah. How, 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 how does that look like in your so family? Just briefly for context, I yeah. played a lot of rugby. Okay. And rugby at the time was very white dominated as well. So yeah. I spent a lot of, a lot of my friends were white. Yeah. yeah. And some of them Afrikaans because of the sport that I yeah. was in. And so coming to Pretoria, same thing. It was very... So I think my parents actually expected me to bring home an Afrikaans girl. Oh. I think that was the expectation. <laughs> okay. So I think we'd already... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> we'd already gone sort of past that bring a Zulu girl home for us. Yeah. Thing. Okay. I think they, they probably concluded that yeah. it was not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So from what I see, it wasn't the fact that she was Congolese or not South African that was the main issue. It was the issue of education. Mm. Okay. Because as she said, she couldn't go to university just after studying because yeah. of circumstances. And my, my parents, who are teachers, both of them, were very strong on education and getting mm. a qualification. Mm. And by that time we met, I'd already completed two degrees. Yeah. So yeah. It, <laughs> I think that was... The thing. They thought it, I was after his money that he yeah. didn't have oh, at the time. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah that they that they felt he was gonna have in the yeah. future. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. wow! So I think that was probably the core of the issue for yeah. them. Yeah, but, yeah. Not not putting those issues aside, but I think those are less um, of them. Yeah. Um, but I think on that, it's like we had to fight for each other. Like we said, mm. that to deserve a podcast on its own about how. <laughs> to fight for each other when the family is screaming at when you. When you mm. feel alone. When you feel alone. And we we fought a battle. Oof. It was not like a walk in the park. In the park, mm. yeah. It was a battle of choosing each other. Oh, wow. Of saying, we believe God has called us to do this. Yeah. But in that, also a testimony of God's 
goodness and mm. faithfulness throughout. And, mm. throughout and kindness and his parents witnessing us growing together wow. uh, over the years, right? And then um, just, was it last year, this year? Sometime this year. Like his this dad year. came to me and said, I was wrong about you. Oh, wow. I am so sorry. I was, everything I thought about you was so wrong. You have proved me wrong. Sure. But it took 17 years to get there. Oh, wow. 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 You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and for, mm. and I know it's a, it's a big thing for wives, particularly that suffer with husbands' families, yeah. right? Um, and I think for me in that whole thing, and it was a difficult road, a very difficult one yeah. for me personally and for both of us. But I think my journey has always been whatever happens, I mm. need to keep my heart pure. Yeah. Mm. I can't change other people. I need to keep my heart pure yeah. because forgiveness, unforgiveness and bitterness becomes yeah. a whole mm. thing mm. on its own. And that was always my battle. So when my father-in-law came and said that to me, and I said to him, you know what, Kulu, I've already forgiven you. Like mm. I had forgiven you long, long ago, long ago, because yeah. it was for my own heart that I needed mm. yeah. to do that. Mm. But it's difficult when you're facing cultural pressure. Yeah. Because some... Yeah, my coat, you must, co must cover mm. your head. Mm. Mm. No, and also, like, um, husbands' families put unrealistic expectations on women who are modern women now. Mm. Like, mm. And the disrespect of in-laws, siblings as well. That's yeah. one thing. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> siblings. Like, <laughs> no. How did you overcome that? Because, jeez, you guys, um, because... You, you were right. <laughs> Your life needs a podcast on its own. How did you overcome that? Because it's not just overcoming the fact that you are from a different country. It's also the culture issue. Because getting into the Zagza household meant there are certain things and duties that you have to have to do. So we avoided some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> By not being available. <laughs> Um, no, I think the, the intention was never to dishonor, mm -mm. but the circumstances were such that we couldn't do certain things, which in retrospect has also been useful yeah. in certain ways. Because yeah. if I could just maybe, there's a lot of expectation on particularly firstborn, particularly firstborn sons, to come back home and take on responsibilities yeah. in the household around certain things. You are firstborn son. Firstborn. Mm. Oh, and okay. only, same with the you. Only son. Okay. But not to now also discount the roles that women play. Yeah. Probably worse than what the guy the, the pressure on guys to do that. But what it did do for us is actually to free us a little bit from the family environment and expectations in time, difficult as it was, that when we look back, we're like it, it gave us a level of autonomy of how to build our household yeah. the way that we want. Mm. So if for example, as it is controversial happened, parents or there's a, a family member that passes away. There's an expectation that you're going to be here. Yeah. Whether you broke your your kidneys, nephews, whatever, happen. you're going to be here. Just that alone puts pressure on the family unit mm. financially and otherwise. When she's pregnant or we have a small child and she can't travel and I need to be away for a weekend, it's just unrealistic for where we are at yeah. as a family unit. But if there's that expectation and that thing from extended family, that could be in itself what ends up breaking that very unit, the things that you're trying to protect. Mm. Mm. And we we get pulled in a thousand directions <laughs> very mm. often wow. because of these expectations. Yeah. Sure. And I think one thing that it's very controversial, mm. people, we decided not to do the whole Lobola thing yeah. because it comes with cultural pressures. Mm. And we talked about it and I understand like, there's a lot that would be expected of you mm. and I want to spare you from that. Okay. Mm. I want to spare you from that because once we do that, we can't stop all the other stuff. Yeah. Mm. So we, let's put a stop to this thing. Mm. Then you are free from all of the other things that sure. I expected of you culturally. Mm. Obviously, it was not you received. You paid a massive price. So we paid a massive price. No, I can imagine. But, I can but imagine. The rewards it, but the rewards out outweigh the... Now, the yeah. rewards are so much. Yeah. Tell, tell me about the price because <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like her family is Zulu. Is expecting... And no, but my family also expected that. Oh, they expected that. In the oh, okay. DRC, you also, oh, you also, also do. Oh, okay. 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 So this is that. universal. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so okay. it's universal. So I had to sit with my dad and say, Dad... You not, don't expect anything. No. 
he was not happy. And okay. e even before that, when I was a teenager, I said to him, you're never going to get a lobola for me. Like, it's not happening. Yeah. I just knew uh, it. You knew even yeah. before you met even him? Even before I met him. Yeah. My, my, my dad raised me a very independent thinker. Yeah. But only when it came to practice, he didn't like it. I would tell him something. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but now when it was happening, it was like, no, not yeah. here. Not here. <laughs> and I explained to him why. I said, I love you and I want to honor you. Yeah. But I and I will honor you in any different way. We, you know, in the Congo, you bring clothing to your mom and dad. We did we'll all do of that. that. We, we, we would do all of it except the lobola. And I explained to him, it's like it's not like in the DRC. It's mm. very different how mm. things mm. work in South Africa mm. Mm. and the DRC. In the DRC, the lobola is paid. You go. It's it's a different thing. Yeah. yeah. But the expectation of the Makoti in this context is just. I said to him, Dad, I I don't want to have that burden on me. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Because there there will be things like we we lowball at her. Yes, so precisely. <laughs> she's supposed to be making combo yeah. 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 yeah, and combo yeah. is the like traditional yes. I know, yeah. 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 <laughs> it be, almost becomes like a possessive thing. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we own we her. You. Yes. Mm. And you know, it's, it, that's, I know yeah. Yeah. Very, different people have different intents behind that yeah. in terms of their heart. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, you open yourself up to many things. Yeah. yeah. I'm not against Lobola and cancer no. coming out like that. Of course. Yes, yes, yes. But mm. there are things that need to be decided for the sake of the future that you want to build. Yeah. And those are not going to change without some level of commitment. Some, I, I've met guys who are saying, ah, oh, I can't get married because I don't have Lobola. <laughs> yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what you should be saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of that. So if, if Lobola money essentially becomes a divider or the hurdle that you must overcome to be with your person, mm. which means that you're probably going to then violate your beliefs. Yes. And engage in, let's say, or whatever mm. the case mm. is. Yeah. No judgment, I get it. Mm. But I'm just saying that if your, your, your beliefs are there and you say, for example, call yourself a Christian and you want to live a godly life, then you can't compromise on certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Like and that just comes with the cost. Yes. That is by so implication. Yes. Yeah. Is so so you must choose. Yeah. That is so good. And it's choosing choice, to honor God choose. or yeah. man because yeah. the word of God is very clear. Yeah. And we don't cohabitate as believers. Correct. But if the lobola becomes the, the stumbling block, like the word of yeah. God says becomes the stumbling block, then the stumbling block must be removed. Must be removed. Yeah. 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 But we can't honor culture above God yeah, so because then it becomes idolatry. And I know this is offensive to <laughs> yeah. some people, but it becomes anything can become an idol. Our yeah. culture yeah. can become an idol. And for us, even at the time, we didn't actually have the financial means. Even if we wanted to do the lobola, we yeah. didn't have the money yeah. to yeah. do it. And, and we didn't want to take money from his parents either because that adds another... It's another pressure. layer of, yes. of ownership. Yes. Pressure, you know? Pressure so <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get this through my head so, because there's certain um, things that happen or rituals mm. that almost recognizes you as yeah. a wife or mm. as a married yeah. sort of couple. So for you, um, Ayanda, I'm just imagining no lobola, so then... Do they recognize her as a wife? How do you get to that point? I mean, I know it's 17 years later, but how do you get to that point where you are now affirmed that she's been accepted as a wife? Good question. I, <laughs> I don't know that I can answer with integrity and say that that has happened in full. But the reality is that I am married to her, legally <laughs> <Yeah>. or otherwise. <laughs> so you can't debate that. Whatever yeah. it is that you just can't. I've got a certificate. I've got a ring. The witnesses. <laughs> Everything is pointing to marriage. <laughs> the vows <laughs> exchanged. <laughs> it looks like right. a marriage. It smells like a marriage. It's probably a marriage. No, definitely. <laughs> she. We. We've got children. Yeah. You can't deny those. Yeah. Um. So I. I don't know. If but they can't deny the children it, either. Yeah. If yeah. You choose to recognize it or not. It is what it is. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and speaking of the children, yeah. um, before the 17th anniversary, you know, how, how was that dynamic with the grandparents mm. uh, and the cousins and everybody, you know, at home, from, especially from the Zaka's side? 
Again, you asked some difficult questions. <laughs> which, like I said, we did an episode just for that. <laughs> um, no, look, it's it's been difficult. They are good it's, grandparents. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah. I think we have grown a lot, as in me and my parents and her parents mm-hmm. as well, in finding one another under these circumstances, which are difficult for them and difficult for us. Yeah. Um, like I said, there has be, there have been costs. So, for example. It's not as easy to visit there because mm-hmm. the dynamics at play there, as in my parents' home. Much as I want to be there more often, it's it's difficult mm-hmm. because of yeah, let's just say the family dynamics yeah. even yeah. today. Yeah. So the relationship that m- my parents have with their grandkids is not as close as what I would have loved to have. Mm. But I realize in time that there's certain things also that I cannot control. No. We've all got to pick to do certain things. To make this whole thing work, mm. and they always have access to the kids. Mm. So yeah. we've, ne- in spite we've of ne- work, yeah. what happened in the past, we've never like said we've them. N- never. Yeah. Like they have full access to the kids. They are welcome to come visit them anytime. Yeah. Um, with my mom and dad, I think it's different with the the mother and daughter. Like my mom and dad have been involved with the kids for, oh, mm. so they have a closer relationship, yeah. particularly with my mom. But I understand have full access to the kids. We've never said. It's a form of punishment. You can't see the kids yeah. because mm. you didn't accept me. It's like whatever. Yeah. Whether you accept me or not, they are mm. still your grandchildren. They're still your grandchildren, yeah. and they love them because she. They love to brag about them, right? Yeah. Mm. It's like they are my grandchildren. They are beautiful. <laughs> they are smart. Yeah. It's like yeah, they yeah. happen because of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. 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 And just okay, to chat on that, ahead. also the distance. So her. Pr- Parents moved to Pretoria from yes. Durban. Oh, they mm-hmm. have. So yeah, they okay. are in closer proximity where mine are still in KZN. Yeah. So, again, yeah. different dynamics at play. Where in KZN? Um, Richmond. Oh, in oh, Richmond. Richmond. The South. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. In Richmond. Okay. So, mm. in terms of, because oh, um, obviously with the kids, I can imagine as well, uh, because they speak predominantly English, I'm sure. Mm. Yeah. You know? Um, that when they go home in Richmond, it's almost like, here are these kids that are speaking English, mm. you know, and all of that. How how does that um, unfold? I mean, mm. because you are Zulu at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. Are your kids learning Zulu? Or <laughs> at school they now? At school now. <laughs> so at school now. <laughs> what became very difficult was because, especially um for a certain period of time, I was working in Joburg. So that mm. means w- leaving home, half past six in the morning, arriving at six o'clock, half past six, seven, and us communicating in English, mm. it became, it, that's became the language the medium. of communication. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So me speaking Zulu only on the weekends or certain hours, it, I just got left behind. Okay. Yeah. And then at some point, my kids are like, what are you saying? Why are you speaking <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? No. But uh, my, our daughter is, in the, is uh, learning Zulu now, okay. and their favorite word is Yom Kinto. Yom Kinto one? Yom, yom Kinto. Kinto. <laughs> <laughs> so they're learning, and their grandparents are trying, but they also have aunts that live in Joburg. Okay. But their aunts also speak English to them. It's yeah. like, it's like, it's easy. It's easy. It's like, guys, it's not all on me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but I do know that they will learn, because yeah. our daughter Kaya, she's really dedicated to learning to learning yeah. the language and yeah. i know the boys will learn it's just they need an environment yeah where they can learn but you know even in these m- schools that we are sending them yeah. Yeah. all the black kids are speaking english anyway mm. <laughs> yeah That's i know it's it it's a we, proper we tr- struggle we're trying i mean we we, we we have the same struggle yeah, yeah. um we try yeah. yeah even though you know um when my mom was still alive she will obviously come when she comes over she'll be like no english today and my kids will struggle <laughs> yeah. But eventually, you know, they will try yeah. and, and all of that. So it's not a it's not an isolated, mm. you know, issue. But mm. I know, and no, I want them to speak Zulu. I really they want need to learn yeah. Zulu at some point. Yeah. You know? So she says. <laughs> Ask her about hers. She means we. They're getting it at school. Yeah. 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 Because because with ours, uh, again, I just want to make this point. Yeah. Uh, I'm closer. She's Zulu, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then when we go to the Eastern Cape, yeah. 
Um, we, we have the same struggle. They, oh, yeah. Believe it or not. <laughs> now, they don't know Kosa at all. They would know sure. few words in Zulu. So they, yeah. they speak English. And the, and the kids in the neighborhood are like, oh, yeah. they, they only you know, speak English. They, yeah. like, oh you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of. So, so, so I think that, guys, with the relationship and certainly the marriage that you guys have, mm. I think that that is what is important yeah you know and what you guys agree about you know this is how we're going to raise our family this is how we're going to mm. grow as a family as a unit nothing else matters nope yeah. <laughs> you know nope. nobody else matters um no opinion matter yeah you know, as long as the two of you agree yeah. you know um uh, uh so with that, you know, I really would want to sort of admonish you um, that you don't, you know, there will always be talks. There will oh, always, yeah. always be people saying this yeah. and the opinions time. about this. There are opinions about us. It's what we were saying earlier on mm. about there is no boundary. There is no, where does it end? Mm. Because if, if, if you're not married, a foreign lady being a South African, then you are closer married to Zulu. Yeah. Exactly. You know, there's still a division. A yeah. You know, that's a problem yeah. <laughs> right there. Mm. And, 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 and if both of us are Zulu, I married a Zulu girl and I'm Zulu, mm. you married, you didn't marry one from Richmond. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> this is something. <laughs> you married it never one. Ends. It they, never they, ends. There could have been a neighbor. Why didn't you take uh, <laughs> you know the same friends. street? <laughs> so it you know? never, it never no, ends. Never so ends. The, the, these boundaries... The way you guys have chosen to navigate, yeah. uh, you know, your marriage and your lives, you know, around them so that they don't affect your marriage. Mm. And perhaps just as a last point to, to just um, talk to us about how and maybe even the role of your faith um, in that. Because as you are talking, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, Sandra... Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, yeah. if 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 yeah. you guys had not given your lives to the Lord, I honestly sit it here. I don't know where mm -mm. you know. I put it to you. Yeah. I don't know where, where would we would be. be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because um, it's what has sort of joined you guys mm -hmm. and put you guys together because you had this unifying, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, thing. Uh, called faith uh, and your faith, Christian faith, that has put you guys together. Mm -hmm. Just briefly about how you guys have uh, managed to jump some of these hurdles, um, yeah. you know, uh, and, and, and people that they put along the way, and whether it's a school, family, or whatever, you know, a church, sure. anyway, yeah. you know. I'll go quickly. And then yeah. I think for, 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 for me, Christ, yeah. and also basing my life on the word of God, not perfectly, but living it to the full, what the word of God says, that's what I live, no compromising because yeah. everything else becomes idolatry. And I think in terms of our marriage and our family, Ayanda has had to take a, a stand. And I know some men are scared to stand up to their mom and dad to protect mm. their wives. Mm. He's had to do that a lot and say, no, she will not be doing that. Sure. She will not be coming. She, no, she will not be at the cost of the relationship with his parents. So he has really played the role of the protector to say, she's my wife, she's my first priority. I'm a protector, her priest, her prophet, her pastor. Mm -hmm. And the rest of you, I'm going to stand before God for this woman. The rest of you, I don't really care yeah. what you think as long as I stand before God. And I think that has helped us. I initially, it was not like that. that we've had to fight for that. Say, I need you to stand up for me. I protect need me. Protect oh. me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've fight that much about that anymore. That's mm -hmm. all I have to say. Mm -hmm. I, if I may, I, I want to say that it's not that I don't care. I do care. Yeah. And I care a lot. And even you talk about things from the outside, they do impact. But the key thing is that it, you've got to make a decision. Um, I always say to, to people that in life we get three choices. One is to choose some, to do something or to choose for something, to choose against or not to decide. Mm. Choosing not to decide is also a choice. It's also a choice. The yeah. only problem with that is then you lose, you are out of control and you suffer circumstances or conditions that you did not choose yeah so i think for me it's it's having faith and having that as a guide is also in itself very difficult the standard of the bible is very very high yeah mm -hmm. impossible sure. so that being that is that then th it leaves a lot of room to be able at least to decide a direction and make certain decisions that i think are good and 
are going to benefit you as a person and you and society and everything else if we if we focus on that anything else i think is I mean, if I didn't have the Bible, I probably wouldn't be married today. Yeah. Mm -mm, I'd probably yeah. be eating two-minute noodles out of a kettle, <laughs> living a bachelor lifestyle. Yeah. Sure, I'd have money. Yeah. Mm. I, I think I'd do okay for myself. Yeah. I'd have a fancy car and yeah. all of that, traveling, but not the richness of life that comes with sure. this. Yeah. And I think this is better. Oh, it is. It is better. I, I yeah. certainly agree with you. Wow, guys, what a time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having um, us. Your, your, I feel like I can listen to both of you yeah. going on and I'm sitting yeah. in the background <laughs> and I'm just listening, you know. What a beautiful journey that you've had. Yeah. You know, sometimes when our journey um, has, you know, um, hills and valleys and, and all of those things, sometimes we don't think it's a beautiful journey. Mm. But I mean, looking at you and sitting and looking at you now, what a journey it's been. Mm. Yeah. And um, I am so excited and happy for you. I feel like marriage is safe in your hands. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? This, <laughs> this is really, really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I can imagine, obviously, the children that you both are raising and all of that. Yeah. You know, for me, if love wins... <sighs> The job is done. The job is <laughs> done. <laughs> Love wins. Thank yeah. you so much, guys, for joining yeah. us. Thank you, so Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for having us. us. Thank it's you wonderful. so much. Love is blind, yeah. you know, and um, yeah, we love that show, by the way. <laughs> 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 love is blind. Look, <laughs> e e if, 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 if also, in order for love to be love, you know, um, e e e it should not only... Uh, grant you the right to say yes, but it also has to give you the Absolutely. right to say no. Yeah. Yeah. Because exactly. it, 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 in order for it to achieve its optimal and the reciprocity yeah. that it, it should be given freely without expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Together we say, I don't yeah. love you. Unconditional. Be yeah. It's yeah. unconditional. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I don't love can... you because once I give reasons mm -hmm. why I love yeah. you, uh, then it's no longer love. Yeah. Yeah. You Cancels know, I don't love you. I love you just because. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? And and, and that's that. And yeah. uh, really, that's what we are witnessing here yes. in this relationship. Thank you so much. Thank, for you. Thank, you. Thank oh, you. Man, what a, what a lovely time. Um, do you want to go through the books quickly? The books? Okay. <laughs> well, um, well, as we end. We, we have got our books. We've got three books. Um, uh, a lot of people, you know, in our comment section, they always ask us, you know, about our books and so on. But um, uh, you can uh, be in contact with us or... Uh, some are available yeah. um, in stores, um, uh, but do let us know, you know. Um, yeah, there's three of them. Titles? You know, to get. Well, titles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, the latest book, our last book is called The Marriage Dance. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> the second book uh, is called Stuff We Wish We Knew Before Getting Married. Mm. Um, and then our first book is called Love Isn't. For cowards. Because yeah. mm, indeed. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> La love isn't for cowards, love guys. Love isn't for cowards. Um, if it wasn't love, you would mm. not be sitting here you know? having gone through what you have gone through. But yeah. look at you, looking all amazing. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Yeah. And we hope you did enjoy this episode. Uh, we certainly did. You know, sitting with this couple has been such an eye opener um, for us. And yeah. yeah, what an amazing, amazing journey. We hope you're going to enjoy this episode. We hope you did enjoy the episode. Thank you so much.